So could you just dis explain what Young Israel is? Yes, yeah, so th th this is a group of this is a group of uh, uh, of writers and and poets. Most of them were Holocaust survivors or refugees who uh, who came to who came to Israel in the early years uh, uh, of the of of the state, and uh, they they wrote in Yiddish. Many of them wrote in Yiddish um, as as very young people. Um, even, even before the war, but most of them were really small children. But you know, during the war and after the war, in uh, uh, in, in 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 camps, and then when they arrived in uh, when they arrived in, in in Israel, it's not that they didn't understand that Yiddish is not really the most important element in in Israeli culture. They were very aware of it, uh, but they. They, 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 they understood that their, their way of expressing themselves poetically and culturally was, was through Yiddish and they weren't ready to give it up. And, um, you know, they, they, uh, they had a lot of encouragement from people like Sutzkever, from, from the older generation who uh, really wanted to establish Yiddish literary and cultural center in 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 Israel, and especially with 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 this with this with these young writers, who really kind of by and large started their career in in Israel and saw themselves very much part of the Israeli environment and wanted to do it in in Yiddish. That was that was an interesting and kind of difficult challenge, but I think because of this challenge, on how to you know how to how to be Israelis and to write in Yiddish and not give up this like not cut the connection. Um, that's what made it so uh, interesting. So um, you know they 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 met uh, in different kibbutzim. You know some people lived in kibbutzim, some people lived in Tel Aviv or in Haifa. Uh, uh, they had well they had they had Sutzkever and 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 the Golden Mekade, but they had their own. A, a journal as well, and 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 books, and they the the Israeli the Israel environment wasn't particularly interested in in what they're doing, but uh, people around the world were. Uh, people read them and were, were very eager to see kind of what's what what is going to come out of uh, uh, out of this. How they going to. Uh, express the kind of the Israeli environment in the poetry, in the uh, 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 prose, and um, yeah, and 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 they, I think, for 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 a, a relatively short time in the fifties and and sixties, um, they they did something very unique. You know, I mean, when you look when you look at their the archives and the correspondence between them and the meetings with b between them. Kind of get a sense that they they really thought that you know there's a chance that Israel is going to become this new center of of Yiddish culture, um, and and through the 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 the, the you know the, the group and the activities and what was going on in in Israel at the time, um, you know it, it look it looks like it's 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 moving uh, uh, this way. At the same time, they were very aware of the difficulties and the problems and who is going to be the audience, how they're going to maintain the Yiddish on one hand and then make it uh, uh, something that is very dynamic uh, uh, at the same time. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I, find, I still find it really fascinating and, and uh, you know, the, the, it's 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 really interesting, I think, to look at what the literature that they produced and to compare it to what was written in Yiddish elsewhere, and also what was written in Hebrew at the time. In some senses, what they did was very kind of ahead of the time, you know. Uh, um, you know, in, in in the end, the, the the group did not continue, and individually, some people like Rivka Basman, or, or you know, con many people continue to write Yiddish until the end of, of their life. Some people, 
moved between Hebrew and, and Yiddish like Yossel Bierstein and like uh, Binyomin uh, Hoshovsky Arsha. Well, in his case, he was also between scholarship and translation and uh, uh, poetry. Some, some people abandoned it, you know. Um, and, and, and the group did not continue uh, 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 to exist as a group for, for, for many years. Uh, but I, I, I find that they also, in a kind of a way that was not always so, so uh, clear on the surface, actually made quite a lot of impact on Israeli culture, on some writers and poets who you know, because of the because of the of the status of Yiddish in Israel, and because Yiddish, you know, Yiddish Yiddish was not did not have a high status, didn't want to didn't want really to 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 explore at the time the connection to to Yiddish. So that's that's another element that I find really interesting, kind of the um, the influence of of Yiddish and of people in in Yungi Soel and other people around them, uh, the influence that they had on people like um, Aaron Appelfeld or even Yaakov Shabtai, you know, people who are kind of the canon of Israeli Hebrew uh, 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 literature. And then you, you see the kind of work that they are doing, both in their own literature and sometimes in translation and the connection that they had how much it had influence. But again, it was, it was not something that they felt, at, at least at that point in the 50s and 60s, that it's something that they, they should or, you know, kind of talk about or to become too explicit, right? Because, um, I, mean, I mean, writers don't like to talk about influences <laughs> in, in, in general, but if they do, you always find that you know they wanna they wanna they wanna be connected with like the great literature of like, you know people like Agnon or Babo or Kafka, not with uh, not 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 with not with Yiddish writers even you know some great Yiddish writers from 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 uh, Europe or from America I don't know people like Lamit Shapiro or, or and, and and definitely not with people from Jung Israel who seemed at the time not to be kind of, you know, on, on top of the agenda of, of, of Israeli culture. So I, fi I find all these aspects really interesting and, you know, part of what I'm trying to do now, which is kind of new element of, of research, is how these people also experienced uh, and wrote about the, you know, what was going on in Israel at the time, 1948, the war, the relationship with Arabs, you know, many of these people, when they came to, uh, to Israel, they lived in abandoned houses of, of Arabs who, you know, were there before 1948. And, you know, and that was a, that was, that was kind of a taboo topic and, and not something that many people in Hebrew wrote about. And I find it really fascinating that many of these people, either Holocaust survivors or, refugees, they kind of felt that there is some kind of affinity and they struggled with this situation of, you know, being refugees and moving into. So I find all these elements really fascinating and that's, that's, that's what I'm trying now to, to, to write about in my, in my work and research. Okay. Um, could, you've mentioned some of them, but could you just name the people that are you know, considered officially in <laughs> Yoni Soil, if there is such a thing. Yeah, well, so the, I mean, I mean, there wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't really a, a group with kind of official uh, 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 affiliation, but there, there were people who were very active uh, in it. So we're talking here about people like uh, 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 Zvi Eisenman, Yossel Bierstein, um, Rivka Bassman, uh, um, Binyomin Arshav was in the beginning a, a, a part of it, Arushovsky, uh, um, and, 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 and th th there were quite a few other people who were involved in the, in, in, in the group in, in all kinds of ways. Uh, uh, Rochel Fishman came from, so they were not all Holocaust survivors or, or refugees, some people, you know, so, uh, Birsten came from, from Australia, uh, Rochel Fishman came from, from, uh, from America, uh, um, yeah, and, and, and 
yeah, it was it was it was kind of loosely loose loose affiliation. You know, for a few years they met and they had these these meetings with debates and 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 writing, and it was quite intense. You know, there's a lot of correspondence going on uh, 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 between them. But there were also people uh, like Clay Brochman and other people who were not maybe part of this this group, but they they published with their and I think I think the way Sutzkever himself and other people thought about it is that all the all these people from the same generation who were in Israel at the time, you know, they are they are young Israel, right? They 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 are committed to Yiddish. They write in it and and they write in the language. They continue to and uh, yeah. So 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 it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell exactly. You know who is in and who is out, but but um, yeah, I, I think that for a while in the in the in the in the fifties there was there was a, a kind of understanding that you know this is this is part of the of the group.